Welcome back guys to another video on the Benglana Football Channel and today I'm going to be speaking about slash reacting to the results West Ham nil Newcastle United 2. I've just got back from the pub. I wasn't going to make a video but I'm fuming. I am fuming now. I am I am very, very concerned where we are going to go as a club this season. Um, I said 16th. Well, if Rice is gone, he didn't have his best game today but we are going down. And... Yes, this, that may be a little bit too soon to say, but the thing that concerned me the most was that this game for West Ham was a lot bigger than it was for Newcastle. I was, one of my friends that I went with to the pub today was a Newcastle fan, and I'm pretty sure he told me they had Brighton at home next. We have Arsenal away, Wolves at home, Tottenham, Leicester, Manchester City, Liverpool. We are going to be bottom of the league come the end of those games. We needed to win this game. This was a must-win game, a six-pointer in the first game of the season, and only that would happen to West Ham. Now, let's analyse the goals, and then we'll talk about general play. So, Newcastle grabbed their first goal from Callum Wilson. Mankio beats Fournells on the right-hand side. He puts the cross in that was deflected off four nails. It goes to Hendricks. He flicks it on. And then Callum Wilson taps it in. Now, yes, it wasn't Cresswell that um, tried beating Mankio. But it just shows you the actual weakness that we have in those fullback areas. Let's start with also Ryan Fredericks. He is shit. There's no other way of describing that guy. He's got pace, right? And he done well in one situation when I think Newcastle countered attacked us and um, what's his name? St. Maxim was through one-on-one. -on -one. He done well there because if anyone, if Ben Johnson had started in that situation, we would have been screwed. However, he could have easily been sent off. First tackle um, in the game from him on um, whatever he's, uh, St. Maxim, that's him. Yellow card challenge every single day that week. Second one that actually got his first yellow card, well, his only yellow card, was a yellow card. So he could easily have been sent off. And I was, he was only in the team. I did say, when I spoke to Nicky earlier today, I did say that I would like to have seen Fredericks because of his pace. But he's terrible at defending. We, we need to spend some serious money. And I have calmed down a bit because it is what I'm recording this at 11 o'clock at night. So I have calmed down a bit and sort of been able to reflect. Now, so let's talk about the second goal. Issa Diop sort of tries to nick the ball from Almiron. Almiron beats him, pulls it back for Jeff Hendrick. Now, Aaron Cresswell, he has literally stood off him, right? Three yards away or two yards away and just let him have the shot. What ben, uh, Jeff Hendrick has done, he's used Aaron Cresswell as a disguise and he's stuck it in the top corner. What you should be doing is closing that ball down, making sure Jeff Hendrick doesn't get that shot off because we were still in the game. And that was just before the 90 minutes had, been, had finished and injury time was coming. And there was five minutes of injury time. If he had just got in, made the challenge, don't let him shoot. He goes and sticks it top corner, and obviously that was game over. Now, I want to talk about how we actually play. So, how we actually played. Jared Bowen couldn't get into the game. As per usual, he worked his socks off. There was a couple of times down the right-hand side, he helped with Fredericks. He worked his socks off, but on the ball, just couldn't get into the game. Same with Antonio. Las Lascales, or was it Lascelles, whatever you want to say his name. And, and Fernandez marked Antonio to a T. And I was a little bit frustrated with Antonio tonight because a lot of the time, as soon as he's got the ball, he just pelted it against the opposition. No real plan in, plan of action in his head. He sort of just received the ball. And I don't want to criticize, like, you know, I am criticizing him, but I don't want to be too harsh on him because he did essentially keep us up last season, towards the end of last season. So I don't want to be too mad at him. But essentially, when he got the ball, it didn't really seem to be much plan of action. He just seemed to boot it against the Newcastle defender. Declan Rice in the first half, in my opinion, yes, he played a very nice through ball to Fredericks, who pulled it back, and Bowen put, the, put it over the bar. He was a little bit, he was off the boil. He, he wasn't really himself, and he was in the second half getting frustrated 
with other players on our team uh, or other players of West Ham because we've got no movement. This has been such a big problem in, you know, sort of just West Ham in general is the lack of movement in the final third. There was a lot of times, I think there was a spell in literally the second half, ten, for 10 minutes we couldn't get out of our half. Declan Rice would play a long ball. Antonio would stand there. Newcastle defender beats him to it because he's the one that wants to win the ball. Antonio stands there like, oh, well, yeah, I, you know. And it's sometimes you have to go to the ball in order to get it. Run towards the ball. Don't just stand there and expect the ball to come straight to you. And then don't expect that another player that sort of read that situation is going to try and nick in, and which is what they've done. And they were just constantly, constantly coming after us. You know what? Um, I have calmed down a bit, but in the pub, I was fuming. Like, thank God I didn't have um, a camera or, you know, a mic that I could have recorded, recorded it because I, I, <laughs> I was fuming. I was utterly fuming. Now, David Moyes, I feel like he went, with a he went with a team that performed, you know, post-lockdown pretty well on the whole. And I don't blame him for that because... He's been put in a situation where he hasn't been able to strengthen the team. Um, so really, what else can he do? He's gone with what he feels done well towards the end of last season. And I can see why he done that. But again, there was times... The only thing that I could say regarding David Moyes, I don't think it's his, it was his fault. But if I was going to criticise him, was that when Newcastle were on top of that period and before they scored, we've got to be you know, uh, proactive instead of reactive. And that is what, in my opinion, separates the best managers in the world to just the OK managers that will obviously earn a living, but they won't ever progress to the next stage. They won't ever win titles. And that is because they're proactive instead of reactive. They anticipate a situation. They see a situation or something's unfolding in a the game they don't like. They'll make a change. They don't wait until we're 1-0 down. And even then, do not make a substitution for 10 or 15 minutes wait 10 or 15 minutes, then make a substitution. That's what we did. We conceded. We waited 10 or so, 10 to 15 minutes before we actually brought on Yarmolenko and Haller. And for me, they were for the right people. Four nails come off and Noble come off. So for me, if if I was David Moyes and I had to analyse how I dealt with that game, I think the, four, I think the starting 11 was probably the right one, considering that lack of options that we've actually got. Maybe he could have started Haller and maybe had Antonio out wide. But however, he's gone with what, you know, what essentially kept us up last season. And you know what? I can't blame him for that. But looking back at that game, can he, before Newcastle get that first goal, can he be proactive instead of reactive? And that would be my main cause for concern. Now, Talking about the creativity, Fornells looked a lot better when he was coming inside. Yes, he's a, he was started out on the left-hand side, but he was drifting inside and he started doing a little combination plays. But we just did not test the goalkeeper enough. Yes, we had a couple of times with the crossbar. Sukek had a header wide. Um, Fornells hit 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 the the bar, and there was an opportunity where Haller pulled the ball back, and there was a possible handball shout. But in my opinion, it wasn't a handball just because. Haller's obviously stripped for the ball. He's booed it across the, the goal at 100 miles per hour. Jeff Hendrick, by the angle that Sky have showed, the angle that Sky showed seems to show that Hendrick had his hands down by his side. And if that is the case, which it looked like, you can't give a penalty for that. Yes, we want to see a penalty because obviously we're losing the game at that point, but it's not a penalty. If he had his arms out at like here then yes, it's a penalty every day of the week. But he had his hands by his side. You can't give a penalty for that, despite the fact, obviously, of course, we want we want the penalty. So, yeah, I'm just concerned for these next seven games because, for me, the main thing... Guys, comment down below if I missed anything. But the main thing for me was that this was a far bigger game for West Ham than it was for Newcastle. And we just did not show up. We were losing 50-50s. And, like, even just... Like, if I had to sum up the game as well, like, in regards to those tackles and 50-50s, Declan Rice at half-time, he goes in for a tackle with Hayden. And he seems... I think he realises that he seems to go in with almost two feet. So he sort of backs out of it. And, like, sort of, I wouldn't say bottles it, but he realises that, you know, it's, it could be a possible poor challenge. And he comes off injured 
and Hayden runs off with the ball. And that sort of result that, you know, when De you know when Declan Rice doesn't have the greatest game, that it, it's bad. It's not it's not good. Right now it's not good. Um when we're, we're not in a good situation, especially the next six or seven games. For me, this was a must win game. This was such an important game. We had to get three points. Because if we didn't if we lose to Arsenal next week, they looked absolutely fantastic. Uh, against Fulham, yes, it was Fulham, but the football, some of the football they were playing, they were carving open, carve, carving uh, Fulham, Fulham open. We could easily get beaten four 0 Then we have Wolves. We never play well against Wolves. We never get results against Wolves. So realistically, like after three games, having three points on the board would have been so good to have, and now we don't, and it looks like we're going to struggle. For me, for me, if Rice goes, we are going to be relegated. That's the way I feel right now. Like I don't, I don't see. And for me, don't don't go spend 40, 40 million on James Tarkowski, whatever you know, whatever his name is. Don't go and spend forty million on him, please. Buy some fullbacks. Fredericks could have easily been sent off. Cresswell was shit again. They are not good. They're not good footballers. They they can't cut it in the Premier League. Fredericks is in the Premier League because he can run. Cresswell was in, he's, he's been in the Premier League and shouldn't really be a Premier League player anymore. He probably, you know, his championship quality. The first couple of seasons when he first joined West Ham, yeah, he was a very good left-back. He had pace. It looks like he's lost that pace. Whether that was because of that injury, we don't know. So, yeah, that's my, emo that's my emotions right now about the game. So, guys, make sure you comment down below what you think about the game. Um, you know, areas for improvement. Well, there's loads of areas of improvement. Just comment, just comment down below what you think. Anyway, I'm just going to try and reply to all of them in the morning. And um, yeah, make sure you hit the subscribe button for new West Ham videos and I'll catch you later.